Hello there and welcome back to Alpha Tauri, and it is still Alpha Tauri. There was the consideration to change to Hugo Boss, but following the recent news, it does seem like the team won't be called that. Whilst Hugo Boss may be coming on board, the team won't be called that. However, it also seems like they won't be called Alpha Tower anymore, so we'll wait to see what happens on that front, and if someone comes up with a livery that matches whatever they do end up being called, we will switch to that when that happens. Didn't really talk about liveries in the off-season, but I have added, or tried to add, the Williams and the Haas changes, because Alfa Romeo, in theory, are moving to Haas, and Williams I've just updated to the Gulf one because I like it. I'm not sure if the Williams one is stuck, so we'll find out that one in-game. And still, no one has done a particularly nice McLaren livery, despite the fact there have been about seven this season. The Chrome one's just grey, which, eh. But as soon as someone makes the recent black-sided livery that they've been using in recent weeks, I'll be putting that on the McLarens. Also, the 1.8 patch is here, which means updated photos for the rest of the field. Alex, of course, is still using the one from the mod. I might take it off just to see what it looks like, but I'm going to leave it on for this video just in case. That's largely for his in-game model, in case that's not accurate still either. But today will be both Sakir and Jeddah, because we are doing two races per video from here on in. Neither of those are sprint races or anything fancy, so just two races coming at you. And if you've not seen the full schedule for this season, then do watch the video that came out on Friday. It includes all the wild driver changes. I won't be recapping them here. But because, of course, we've got to get through two Grand Prix in episode, let's not waste any more time. Well, I said I wasn't going to include qualifying. I, I might do, because Alex is eighth, and I do need to show you, of course, the way that people get out of the way in qualifying now. But Alex eighth, I made a mistake with Yuki Snowden and kind of forgot to have them push on their actual push lap. <laughs> so he starts 17th. Not sure I can do a sponsorship bonus because one would expect Lance Stroll behind. Both on the same strategy, soft, medium, soft, and they have fixed the Q3 tyre unlocking bug as well. Yuki does have two fresh sets of soft, while Alex, you can see there, is missing a little bit on his second stint, which means he'll come in a little bit later, automatically splits them on that second stint. But of course, they're separated by nine places to begin with. And this is it, the Bahrain Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go! A mix of softs and mediums is Charles Leclerc and Paul, Max Verstappen, Russell, Perez, Magnussen, Ocon, Seitz, Stroll, Albon and then Gasly, although a bit of a fight behind. Stroll's already got Alex, just straight away. That's why I didn't put incentives in. We'll come back in, everyone got away cleanly. Yuki up to 16th though straight away. Oscar Piastri and Alpine now, of course. Again, this is confusing. Behind. Two rookies in the form of Hajar and Awasa in both Hasses. As we actually get the highlight for Snowden overtaking Bottas, you can see the Williams ahead, who also got him. That Golf Williams does really stand out from the other blue teams, of which, of course, there are two others in Red Bull and Alpine. And it does actually kind of match the colour scheme of the uh, map dots, which Williams, for some reason, got a light blue one of, even though their original car is basically the same colour as the Red Bull, if a little kind of more royal blue. But Snowden 15th, as things stand, still chasing Giovinazzi, lap two. AI still won't stop driving, of course, at full whack until lap three. Alex still on Stroll's tail, Norris behind. Forgot to mention, you could see it on the original page before we went into everything. Yuki Snowden now rated 85, got that extra point in the off-season. I haven't actually checked what his specific attributes are, because I don't remember getting the email at the start of February set talking about development. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm assuming he's improved something, probably just more adaptability, <laughs> knowing the way this game works. But both our drivers have split from the people behind them, crucially. The Red Bull's slightly running away. Now, our strategy is designed with a four push in mind, so a five push isn't that horrendous. DRS will begin on this short straight here. Not really enough for anyone to get through, I don't think, but and of course people are in trains. That being said, there is that Gulf Williams, and there's our... Wait, that's Yuki getting past the Williams outside of anything DRS-wise, which is a bit irritating because it means Giovinazzi's got it back, but I don't think he's mounted a challenge as such. He has not. Yuki Snowden actually now in the train with Joe Guan Yu and De Vries. Abbas still holding on to DRS on what is ultimately Ocon, but I suppose they're now fighting each other, allowing Alex to get actually a lot closer, I think. Yeah, shaved a good half a second off there. He was about nine tenths behind, now only three or four. Honestly, it's going to take me a while to remember who's where. <laughs> Thank God for these icons, by the way, as the Ferrari Russell is now hunting Max, who stayed in the Red Bull, and Leclerc in the Red Bull. Seems like they've got pasted that. Max in the fourth is baffling, considering he's actually technically the worst of the two Aston Martin drivers. Fernando Alonso is actually available to hire. He hasn't actually straight up retired. He just ran out of contract and didn't get picked up again for whatever reason. Lewis Hamilton has just straight up retired. He's unavailable to acquire. But Fernando Alonso is open to offers. 
Just saying. Watch this DeVries lock up just this to see what it looks like. Has he just gone wide on turn eight? Uh, yes, he has. In fact, being hunted by Yuki there. Unfortunately, I don't think they improved the rejoining because he's now rejoined last. As Yuki Snowder passed someone there, but meanwhile, Albon has got Ocon at turn three. And I think they were just close enough to Lance Stroll to have got DRS again on the subsequent straight. He did. And, oh, no, it's actually the DRS off Ocon that he was using. It was behind at that point, but got into Strolls again, crucially. Not getting the replay for Snowder on, on Joe Granue, unfortunately. We'll just let Yuki go for it a little bit. Try and keep Joe Granue a little bit more at bay. So I didn't put in the sponsorship bonus, and crucially, Alex is basically where he started. Still in eighth. Just Stroll and Ocon have swapped over for some reason. Is that the difference between Sainz and Ocon in that Mercedes? Sainz holding on to fourth is since Stan Perry's hunting him, though, with Magnussen and Stroll for company, while Ocon is struggling to keep up with, well, Sainz, ultimately, actually, because he's the one leading this train that ends with Alex. Crash involving multiple cars. Something has happened. Oh, my God. What's happened? What have they done? Leclerc and Verstappen have sort of just stopped. <laughs> that is a bizarre audio message. Fortunately, he didn't really do anything for the race. Verstappen got the penalty and remains in first. He was the one who actually drove off. It was Leclerc that was kind of caught. I am topping up with Albon because he seems to be more than capable of holding on to this train. And I might actually start topping up with Yuki as well for good measure. Because it looks like he's more than capable of holding on to Gasly, ultimately. I mean, three, three DRSs are helping here. And in fact, I wasn't really expecting anything here because, you know, DRS trains and everything. But Magnussen's there and Magnussen isn't there anymore. Looks like Pierre Gasly has cut the gap as well in ninth. So Alex up to seventh. He has actually made a place now. I'm ruining the decision not to include sponsorship bonuses for this race now. Max Verstappen, of course. Five, uh, five second penalty, I imagine. And now there's just a straight up yellow flag. Gone as quickly as it came. I think it might involve the Salba towards the back. It is De Vries. Is it just De Vries by himself? Oh, it's just De Vries by himself. Also, crucially, speaking of Salbers, the Salbers are now referred to as Salbers in text. Someone has created a secondary mod that changes the name of the team. Oh, completely forgot to actually really show you uh, the Alfa Romeo Haas with Banco de Brazil on the back. But that's the Alfa Romeo Haas, white and the kind of maroon of Alfa Romeo. Burgundy, whatever colour they decide to call it. Yeah, so they joined Salber in a colour change, of course. As of next year, that will be an Audi. I think there is an Audi mod for that, along with just being Salber. So 2026, of course, is when they come in fully. I just sort of preempted it and decided to split the gap with Alfa Romeo Haas. Albon actually having a go at Perez, apparently. What's the tyre situation? Soft runners, about the same or slightly worse. Medium runners, obviously, better. Crucially, at this point in time, Snowder does have a DRSless Norris in his sights, in his wing mirrors, as he's done exactly the same thing he did to Giovinazzi, I think, and decided to nab him outside of DRS, which is not the best thing to do here, but I appreciate him doing overtakes outside of DRS just to show that it can still be done. Of course, that's Yuki Snowder's 89 overtaking attribute coming into play there as well. I mean, that is his strength. Also, four laps away from his pit stop and still well above on his tyres. I think we just let him go five push at this stage. We might just let him attack one lap longer than Alex. We'll get Alex to attack the lap after. Certainly uh, proving that we did make a mistake in not letting him push on Q1. 17th to 11th and it's only lap 14. Our car didn't seem to be this good, really. I wasn't expecting this. Also, shout out to Ricardo, who isn't last in a race. Snowder immediately cutting the time to the one ahead, but Norris fighting back, unfortunately. As long as Norris doesn't get DRS by the end of this straight, this might work in our favour. Because if Snowder nabs the DRS at this point and Norris doesn't have it, then he'll just get him straight back on this main straight. And that should, in theory, launch us into Ocon, who doesn't have DRS. Oh, Snowder, what are you doing? The first pitter comes in. It's Magnussen. Off softs, I assume. Fortunately, Yuki didn't deal with Norris before Norris got into Ocon's DRS, and so now we're in a bit of a three-way. As Yuki, the only soft runner in this trio by the time he's done with this pushing i think he'll actually be slower than them because they're on mediums it might almost be worthwhile to i know but of course we'll be pitting before them anyway because they are on mediums i right, said so for stappen's in with his penalty of course comes out way down the field that is giovinazzi and piastri definitely ahead awasa hajar magnuson who of course pitted all got through ahead of Verstappen. Verstappen joins the end of a train. He's going to have a bit of bother down there. Norris got Ocon. Snowder's essentially inside Ocon as he's about to peel into the pits. There goes Yuki and Norris as well ahead of him. On mediums. I see Norris is on the, has pitted on mediums on the same lap as Yuki on softs somehow. As the Red Bulls are putting soft tyres away. So I think the Claire's just come in. Arbon up to fourth temporarily as he'll pit next lap. 
Yuki held for Norris, unfortunately, as now they're on opposite tyres. Norris on softs. So if Stappen got through, Yuki directly behind Magnussen. Norris has got Magnussen through the pits because of this delay with the Wasser and the Hadjar. Christian for Norris, he's already through that as well. Not great from our point of view, but we've got a little bit of breathing room to Magnussen as the tyres warm up. But we're going to have to hope they deal with a Wasser quickly, or a Wasser pits, of course. Albon dives in the pits. Probably should have utilised that DRS a little bit longer, actually, now I think about it. But onto mediums for him too. 1.94, our pit stop. Quite good. Comes out directly behind Stroll. I think he was behind before, but crucially ahead of a Stappen. Who he kind of actually did have to cover off. And because our tyres are cold, he's immediately on our backside. He's on softs as well. Is Stroll on a medium now? He is. Oh, and there, he's being held on by a yet-to-pit Piastri, which might help us. Uh, Sonoda is through Owasa now, as Paris signs Gasly and on all pit. We'll watch that replay, mostly because it involves the Haas. Uh, it's going to make um, the necessity to call Salba Salba that a little bit more crucial, because Alfa Romeo is something else entirely now. Of course, Haas get to keep their logo, which helps. So Albon through, crucially. Sainz now way down. Ocon way down. Magnussen way down. Sonoda directly behind Ocon. Nearly got him. So Albon's got Sainz through all that, I think, as well. Piastri's still yet to pit. Joe Guan still yet to pit. So he's still, he's net fifth at this point in time with Verstappen up his chuff. But Russell now pits. I didn't realise he hadn't pitted yet, but he did have clearly 20 seconds to Leclerc. So I think he'll still get out well ahead of everyone. As Ocon takes Sonoda, that's not great. Oh no, Ocon was ahead of Sonoda originally. Why did we not get the reverse highlight? As we see Yuki power back past again. Might as well have that by Esteban. Esteban on softs, of course, as you just saw there. Albon in Stroll's DRS he is actually holding up Sides and Norris to boot as well. As he tries to make a move and fails. Probably not the best spot for it. As over Ocon gets Sonoda again. That looks like that's going to be a fight until they get caught up with, well, Gasly, I suppose it is. Maybe just let Max through, Alex. He's a Red Bull on softs. Maybe we, just, maybe we just let that one happen. I'm not going to tell you not to defend because then I'll open you up to Sainz and Norris, really, if we're not careful. But good, Max is through and is dragging Stroll with him. I say dragging Stroll with him. Stroll's overtaken for Stappen again. And Sainz has left Albon behind as well. As Norris comes through on softs, of course. Don't know if Norris has done soft, soft or not. But Alex fights back, which is nice. Is that Pierre behind? I assume it's Pierre, because Esteban... Oh, no, Esteban isn't even in a Alpine anymore. Piastri isn't anywhere near. And then that is Esteban behind in a Mercedes. Someone's had a yellow. Um, Perez ran wide. I mean, that literally did not affect anything at all. This went a little wide. Didn't enter anyone's DRS. He was already outside, I think, of the front two. So, utterly relevant in the grand scheme of things. Albon on Norris still, though, as he'll presumably get him back through this DRS. Making a fire that. Snowder in 12th and kind of comfortably in 12th, irritatingly at this point in time. Trying to work out who's come through, because he was 11th before. I mean, he was 11th before, fighting Norris and Ocon. But they've got onto softs. This is Gasly's turn this to have a pop. Happened. He's also on. Oh, I wish it was like we're the only medium runner at this point in time, but I can see Magnus is on a medium, which is why he's dropping off a little bit. And I think the sights ahead is on a medium. Yeah, as is Stroll. Not a lot of medium runners at this point in time, which makes the last stint fun. But I'm trying to work out who was behind us before. Oh, I can see someone tumbling. That looks like Lance Stroll. Ye old classic. Oh, I could just see the uh, stricken vehicles as we drove past them there. Oh, it's Pierre Gasly as well. That might be Pierre's fault, actually. Looks like Pierre went up the inside and he didn't have a right to. I mean, Stroll could be given the penalty because of course he has, but we get a highlight for overtaking Stroll. I don't think it was difficult and it's not actually showed it. The opportunity's there. Kofti's still talk talking over it, though. Kofti, we're not seeing the replay. But Stroll's in the pits because his tyres are dead as well. Did he lose his wing or something? He's lost his end plate. And somehow that's both Snowder and Ocon to get... Oh, no, it's Magnussen, sorry. I think he must have lost out to Magnussen through all that, somehow, in avoiding it. Because he's got Kevin back again. We do actually get to see this replay, thankfully. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alex is actually ahead of Norris and Ocon again. Ocon's actually fallen out of DRS range. Norris is still fighting, though. We're not getting any closer to sides. We might actually be able to just five push because 127 is only about seven degrees above the threshold. So it's not actually too detrimental to be just attacking like this. And obviously both of their smoothnesses are not terrible. I think they're 85-ish, both of them. Yuki's are maybe 87. Snow just left Magnuson behind. <sighs> Straws had another moment. Of course, his confidence would be in the toilet if the AI has the same kind of confidence simulator. There he goes. Just, just sort of parks on it. the outside briefly. So Yuki's not got far to go as Norris and Ocon continue to be a thorn in Alex's side. But Magnussen and Perez have already pitted off their mediums. Well, Magnussen was on a medium anyway. Norris dives in the pits early onto softs. Okay, that might be a problem for Alex then because Yuki will come in first. 
temporarily just running freely in a... Well, I can just give Yuki two laps because he's on 50 percentile still. I was kind of in the same boat as there's a yellow flag. Ricardo's had a spin, but I think that yellow flag is for something different. I think there was a separate incident directly behind a Wasser just going... Whoa! I mean, it's weird that there's certain places where they do come back on the track sort of sensibly. Although I think we had a crash because of that returning before. All right, so Yuki in and out. Have some people not pitted again? Piastri hasn't pitted again. And that's it. Clean air. Better stuff than some people. And just full on attacking for the remainder of this race. One kilogram down still. There might be a smidge of recovery to do. As Albon just drives around for another couple laps on these mediums going for it. Is Gasly wounded in 20th? Obviously he's part of the incident. Yeah, still missing an end play. Dane not to uh, take it. A new wing by the looks of things. Piastri in now, so Snyder back up to 10th. Alex Zane, of course, is pitted a lot later than some of the people he was fighting with, but onto softs with the intention to just destroy them. Fingers crossed that allows us to maybe put in times that are a little bit better. Oh my god, he's come out directly with Sonoda. Don't fight him. In fact, actually, if you're in DRS range, use this opportunity to get your fuel back. Or Alex can just drive off the track. Just a lock up. I thought Alex would have had DRS there because it looked like he was in it, but... I mean, it's a little weird that Yuki Snow is going to end up this race ahead of Alex, considering. But, oh, that's a point. Just in case somehow they end up in the same area of the track. Make sure he can actually stay ahead of... Oh, almost missed that overtake there. That's Yuki Snowder on the inside of Kevin Magnussen once again. Hello, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. There's Alex in the background. I mean, we're going to drag Kevin around with us, I think. I was about to say, at Bahrain, sometimes the AI make foolish strategy choices with their tyres, and it looks like Science is on 36%, 35% as we're talking. Obviously quite good on his tyres, typically, but that is a differential that Yuki Tsunoda can make work for him with three full laps to go-ish. He is two seconds a lap faster, or oh, 2.7 seconds faster that time, and only two seconds behind total. I did wonder why Norris had got through, but it's Norris and Ocon who are still in DRS with each other, and they've just got Science in the process. In fact, Yuki Tsunoda in DRS range this time round as we looking at the wrong person. There's Yuki Tsunoda having left Magnussen behind. Crucial, well behind. It's Yuki's turn to have a little nibble on Carlos Sainz. I think we'll wait till the next DRS zone, don't you, Yuki? Maybe deploy and get past him, mate. Use every remaining little droplet you've got for this. Lovely work, that Yuki Tsunoda behind the detection point. Using the DRS to power away from the stricken Carlos Sainz on those used, used tyres. Alex looks like he might be in range of Kevin Magnussen behind there, actually. We might have to divert our attention to them shortly. As Charles Leclerc starts the last lap, we're not too far behind on that front. Of course, Alex's confidence would have taken a little bit of a knock from that lockup, but it seems to be okay. Overall, meanwhile, Yuki's at peak performance, which looks like 99 accuracy for him, 90 braking, 96 overtaking. <laughs> I mean, he's ridiculous when he's at peak. As Alex, we kind of overlooked that as he was doing it, but in that DRS zone, that is Lance Stroll behind. He recovered okay in the end to, well, he's probably 11th. He clearly chose to fix anything that was broken. Yuki not getting that much closer to Ocon on Norris, sadly, but we'll deploy him from here. Oh, wait, no. Stroll's a lap down on Magnussen, I think. He must have he must have not replaced his damage either, which was to this end play. There might be more fundamental things that are broken on his vehicle, but Charles Leclerc wins his first race in Red Bull. Russell second and Paris third. Three big driver changes on the podium in race one. Verstappen fourth, Ocon fifth, Norris sixth, Sonoda seventh, Sainz eighth, Albon finishing ninth after his own lockup, Magnussen tenth, and just Stroll and Gasly lapped following their incident. Ricardo seventeenth, not last in the first race. Oh no, he's 18th. He's 18th. He's been overtaken by the Rocky. Oh no, he's last of the people that weren't involved in an incident. It's another year of pain for Daniel Ricciardo. There you have it. A new look podium. Charles Leclerc, Red Bull, George Russell, Ferrari, Sergio Perez, Ferrari. Yuki up 10 places to 7th. Alex down 1. Thank God we didn't do the sponsorship bonus to 9th. Kevin Magnussen and Lando Norris also getting points. But obviously two drivers getting points. Caesars with 8. Norris got fastest lap on top of his 8 points. So that's 9 for him. And as you can see there, Salba ahead of Haas. It's nice just to be able to see the word so I don't get tripped up. Alex with the fastest pit stop by miles. Yuki not far off. I joked about it, but his accuracy has actually literally gone up to 92 from 91. Why does it always improve the one thing I don't need him to improve? I want these two to go up. Right then, so it's the same car as it was in Bahrain, as it will be in Saudi Arabia. No new parts have been able to be manufactured in time, just the parts that are already on it. We've got more of. But there is new front wing and new side pods being manufactured. Well, new side pods are being manufactured. The front wing's having to wait until other things are being manufactured. But there will be a front wing, but not for Saudi Arabia. Just an example of the new moving out of the way in action there, as Yuki well and truly gets out of the way of the cell that was coming through. Thought I'd just bring that up, because it is a 1.8 edition, and solves that one problem might really lamented so far. There goes Nasty Martin for good measure. But 
You sort of recall me in Brazil highlighting when we were trying to get past Max Verstappen, who wasn't on a flying up, and we were. He moved out of the way more than fine enough. He just didn't slow down enough to really properly let us past, even on a straight. Now fixed. Ironically, actually, it doesn't mean you have to put slightly more consideration in the time that you give to get out because you're going to be moving out of the way and losing more time. But that's about it. Uh, we are fourth and sixth with five people still yet to do times. That's more like it. Sixth and tenth. Because of track rubber changes they've done in 1.8 as well, I'm feeling a lot less confident when there's, I mean, there's three tenths to the line. But we'll see what kind of improvements De Vries and Giovinazzi do here. Because they're kind of the main ones. I think Haas and Sauber are still well off the pace. Both our drivers have gone faster, actually. So I don't think Giovinazzi and De Vries... No, I don't think we actually needed to run our drivers. So Alex is the second of the two. Alpha Tower is in Q2 here. As we do a flying lap of Saudi Arabia. I feel like Yuki's not as far ahead as he should be here. Yuki was the one behind on the first runs. And I think he got a huge slipstream off Alex. So I was kind of hoping to return the favour second time round, but Yuki is a, a lot closer than I thought he'd be. Qualifying is also supposed to come with an increased chance of errors and mishaps. You can see Sites two seconds off the pace. I suspect he had a moment. Maybe just a little running wide, little just kind of not quite accurate line, but two seconds is quite significant. Whilst also simultaneously reducing the chance of accidents in practices as well. Trying to reduce the uh, mentality of drivers treating practice as if it's a race. Somehow Alex has gone slower despite having the slipstream. Admittedly, that's more of a thing towards the end of the lap, I think. Yuki's managed to go faster in both sectors despite not having it this time round. Like I say, I suspect the slipstream is more of a thing here and to the line. Piastri remains behind Sonoda. Crucial. Gasly remains behind. Crucial. Yuki across the line. Marginal improvement. Alex stays 11th. That's unfortunate. Maxson across the line now. De Vries and Sainz, I think, are in the chasing pack. Maxson doesn't improve. I think he's coming into the pits. Is De Vries? He is, yes. Sainz is going to the line. Slips between that Ferrari. His old team goes fourth. I expected him to do a much better time there. And all cars finished. Shogun knew 10th. Sounded like he was coming in. As for Q3, I have strategically, on his second run, to push his tyres a little bit later in the lap because I noticed they were overheating by the end of the flying lap first time round. Probably still going to be a problem, but I, I figured I'd try to mitigate that as much as possible. Fast the first sector. It does look like the McLaren, the head on the road, is done with their lap because it just moved out of the way for the Aston Martin. That's Hello, there it is. Wow. I mean, just look how much better that is. Just look how much better that is. Yuki didn't even have to hesitate there. Straight pass, better middle sector as well. So either Joe or Norris are done. Maybe both of them are. We'll find out shortly. Stroll is done, taking the checkered flag. Yuki better in all respects, takes seventh from Stroll, temporarily. It was Norris, in fact, who is tenth, so Yuki can't be worse than eighth at this point. Here comes a Ferrari, that's Russell, claiming fourth, doesn't improve. Jaguar new to the line, needs two, well, over two tenths. Just finds just under two tenths, stays ninth, so Yuki seventh for the race. In a drastic change of fortune from last time out when it was the other way around. Middle East starting where you finished, I suppose. The Street Track Master starts six, Sergio Perez in the Ferrari. Now we know from history that everyone does a one stop here, either soft to medium or medium to soft. We'll follow the trend, or we'll just do them on opposites because there's a decent split between the two. You keep the focus pre race. It's almost time for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And it's lights out. And away we go! A mishmash of soft and medium runners, of course, as I say, it's soft and medium one way or the other. That's the exclusive strategy here, as we are focusing on Albon in 12th, who is being taken by Gasly straight away, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Yuki has taken Perez off the line. Perez on medium, so we'll come in, no incidents. We've gone one lap under on fuel, that's loud. Russell challenging Sainz ahead, as Sonoda make... Mm. Sonoda puts a little bit of pressure on Ocon. Piastri and Gasly were on sauce. He got Gasly back, actually, did Alex. Sonoda's, Sonoda's got Ocon, but I was paying attention to Alexander Elbon having a go at Oscar Piastri. Still weird saying the word Ocon and then viewing a Mercedes. It's his natural path, really, when you think about it, but Elbon's still fighting Piastri. And he makes his stick eventually, as for some reason we got the notification of Piastri overtaking Elbon rather than the other way around. Do we get the highlight for that? We do. So despite the fact that Oscar is on soft tyres, of course, and actually up to a reasonable rating now shouldn't be too hindered by that anymore of course the last two years he's kind of by the time we've got to the races just plummeted like a stone in the race itself i still think he might be a little bit lacking in certain race aspects which i think hold him back namely probably smoothness but his overall rating is sort of up a little bit now as norris and joe knew were actually fighting each other that's helping alex i didn't put a sponsorship bonus in because yuki was seven and realistically it was his top six drivers ahead of him this i don't feel like is going to be sustainable unless someone crashes if he started eighth i might have considered a seventh 
I feel like we might be able to nab a stroll in the race, but based on what happened in round one. But yeah, Perez, Ocon, Sainz, Russell, Verstappen, Leclerc, with them the only six ahead of Yuki Snowder, wasn't confident. Long term, of course. Yuki's on a soft here, don't forget. Making the most of it. Trying to tag on to faster drivers and help them pull him along for this first stint. So he can secure seventh, is the hope. Alex has apologised with something. Is it his fault? No, that's that's 100% Norris's fault. 100% Norris's fault, who just decided to turn in on a corner where Alex existed on the inside. The fact that Highlight is focused on Norris makes me feel like it is treating him as the perpetrator there. It did. At 14, Alex is... Uh, not lost anything. Aerodynamics front wing is minor. He's dropped to 10th as a result. Well, let's have a look at this. He is... Oh, he's losing like half an end plate. That's not really a problem. We can change it in the pits, but we'll change it in the pit stop. The one stop is kind of sketchy here. Alex is kind of doing okay, but we are not... We're not able to push even with curbs because pushing with curbs is still, still overheating the tyres. In fact, pushing... Just standard pushing without curbs is destroying the tyres. We'll try that. I feel like we're going to end up with Yuki and Alex in roughly the same ballpark by the end of this race. If we can just get Yuki to the optimum lap, that would be great. All right, so I think we're going to have to bring Yuki in whatever the next lap ends up being for him. Yeah, he's just past the pit entry, so that's kind of perfect. Yuki comes out well ahead of Zhou Guan Yu. Meanwhile, a bit of a straightforward race, this one, unfortunately. There's a bit of back and forth with Alex and Gasly, but I figured it wasn't really necessarily worth showing you every single overtake here. But we'll focus on that one just because it's happened around the same time as Yuki's dealt with this pit stop. Alex is sort of maintaining the path he needs to be on with this, basically. So hopefully that works out long term. We'll get these tyres up to temperature and then just sort of see what happens from there. Of course, Alex is going to have to change his front wing in the pit stops, I think. We might be able to get away with it, frankly, but Alex said something was wrong with it, so it kind of makes me paranoid that he is losing some... In fact, easy way to check. No, sort of keeping on pace as he was before. 132, 7, 132, 7, 133, 4, 133, 3, 133, 3, 133. That's when the incident happened. 133, 2, 133, 2, 133, 2. Sort of consistently 133s after that point. So I think the front wing's okay. I think we might be all right to leave it. Trying to see if we can get a good angle on it. That's Yuki. That'll be why. Split second too late there. This fight continues. It's Gasly the one without DRS though, which is helpful. Yeah, you can sort of see full on this side. A little bit missing that side. As that's Russell coming back through having pitted, I think. Magnussen? No, Max has died 14th. He hasn't pitted yet. I don't know. Maybe Alex could be capable of more. I kind of don't... I kind of just don't want to throw a front wing into... For no reason. Are they supposed to... The front wing's about to be... A new front wing's about to be manufactured anyway. As, as those faster vehicles are making their way through again. There comes Sainz. Just ruining Alex's morale, of course. Despite the fact there's nothing you can do about this. Yuki's just behind, actually. They might not end up on the same place or track by the end of this race, after all. Max has yet to pit, crucially. And Yuki's almost on him as well. Oh, they're fighting each other. Clearly that Sainz overtake was a little bit delayed. I think we might be able to pit Alex one lap later. He's on 40% tyres. Do we change the front wing? It's seven and a half seconds. And I don't know if he's actually going to lose that. I think I may have accidentally put... I think I may have forgotten to put Alex next lap rather than this lap. But nonetheless, we're going to change the front wing because I don't know if it's made a difference or not. Hopefully he gets out of bottom. Hopefully he still gets out ahead of Bottas. He's Christian still ahead of Norris. Snowden's in sixth, by the way, having pitted. Perez and Ocon have ended up behind him on softs. Only four seconds is that gap. So, realistically, we're looking at eighth for Sonoda here because those two will get through. Mind you, they might have to fight each other. I think they're fighting each other now, actually. That might hold them up a bit. Russell went in a lot earlier and his tyres are a lot worse. Norris went on to hards. Interesting. Just over halfway in the race, we've got less than half the fuel back as well. Albon, if you wouldn't mind just sort of dispensing of Bottas, that would be great. That's not dispensing of Bottas, is it, Alex? Try again. One more opportunity here. Why do they do this? It's got him. <laughs> Finally, he's got him. He's got him finally. <sighs> Took him three laps. I even told him to drive in clean air in case that was the problem. That was more Bottas letting him through just the way he moved. I feel like I've missed one of these highlights because Ocon's already ahead, but there's Perez on Sonoda. The inevitable. I wonder if we've just accidentally given Perez the opportunity to get past Ocon there. Nope, he didn't take it. We did take it eventually. Sonoda hanging on, interestingly. Not by the time they actually do any detection, though. But he's 30 seconds ahead of Zhou Guan Yu. That kind of feels like that race done, frankly. Alex is getting a decent amount of time on Nick DeVries in 13th, but that's about as far as that's going to go. Mind you, he's only just behind Piastri, so he might get both of them by the end. Got to go seven fuel first, though, unfortunately. So now he's stopped conserving. He might get DeVries and Piastri. 
They're fighting each other, though. Took Yuki too far. Well, it's been a bit of a dull race. Yuki was left alone once Perez and Ocon came through there. But now one's joined a fight, just in the dying stages. Hello, Davies. Hello, Piastri. Both on mediums. Well, I told Alex to harvest that lap, and he's still got Piastri. But Piastri's coming back because he's been blocked off. Hopefully, we'll be able to just DRS power past Piastri again there, and maybe actually get Davies for good measure. He's on the inside going into turn one, and he's nabbed him. We've got point one of fuel just to push that. Watch this highlight, because it's frankly the only one we've had. Something for Alex to kind of care about. He did start 12th, so he's not really lost anything. Nice to watch the DeVries part of that as well. There we are, once again. Lovely jubbly. Back past Albon. He was seven and a half seconds for a wing change. Like I say, I don't know how much that made it. I mean, it might have been ahead of Joe Guanyu and Gasly. They are six and a half seconds up the road. Or maybe you could have got a point if we hadn't done that, but we don't know if he was actually slower because of that. It's all a bit of why if, really. And by the time we get to the next race, or at least the race after next, I think we'll be on new front wings anyway. So it's not like we needed the piece. The piece would have been placed after the race regardless. It would have been counted as destroyed. So the lead is on three laps to go. That is Verstappen, who is half a lap away. Just, just wondering if I could have maybe just gone all out on Alex now. You can notice it's all comfortable <laughs> at this point in time. All right, so Verstappen's about to start the last lap. So Alex is about one and two thirds behind. Go for it, Alex. I don't know if you can make up three and a half seconds in two laps, but it's worth a punt, isn't it? Especially if they have a moment, because they are fighting each other. It's wild how much time Alex has gained on those two, though. Four and a half seconds they are behind. Four and a half seconds. But it does seem like we're fighting for best of the rest with the occasional McLaren, uh, Mercedes, with the occasional Aston Martin if they're having a little bit of a moment. Magnussen actually did still end up nine seconds behind. Like, Magnussen is still 10 seconds behind Yuki. He did qualify 14th. He didn't have a great qualifying, of course, but the fact he's not gained in the race is interesting. Meanwhile, Stroll's remain... To be fair, with Snowder, actually. He's only four seconds behind Ocon. When you look at the Toledo, he's 25 seconds off the lead. That's not disgraceful. Albon's obviously had a problem with his own in all this, but... So Max wins from Leclerc. Well, it looks like Russell will be on the podium again. Stroll doing a much better race this time around in fourth, rather than 19th. Perez fifth. Did actually go up. Streetmaster, upper place. Signed sixth. Ocon seventh. Snowder gets... Eighth ahead of Magnussen. It's weird that we're in this fight. Don't really understand it, but we'll take it. Meanwhile, Arbon, two and a half seconds by Zhou Guanyu and Gasly. They didn't really have any moments towards the end there. Maybe we unpaid him for a front winger. He would have been comfortably 10th, but we had to play safe, really. Ricardo nowhere near last, actually. The Albon's up the train. I don't know if anything was wrong with Giovinazzi, but good race for Lance, actually. Four places up in the end. Kevin did go up five places, but only from 14th to 9th. In Milan, Antonio Giovinazzi did go from 16th, I think, to 20th, which is interesting. Like, these guys at the back were relatively spread out, all things considered. The Haas is behind the Sabres. Wonder if Sabres have actually made a, a little bit of an improvement there. But last trial goes up 13 places in the constructors' uh, drivers because he didn't have points before. Yuki goes down the place despite getting four more points because Carlos gets eight as well, for good measure. Leclerc remains on top after two. Still eight people without a point as Pierre joins along with Lance, of course. We remain in fifth, though. Only three points behind Aston Martin. We do get the fastest pit stop, but of course we had a front wing change on the other one. Remain on top of that though for now. We get a decent haul every race, which is good. Money-wise, you might be able to start upgrading other facilities soon. So, underfloor manufacturing complete now. Yuki needs a new front wing as well after that race regardless. You didn't even break it, it just ran out and failed immediately after two races. And that's the one that we started the year with. So we've not even taken races out of that in terms of its, you know, integrity and its weight. You know, that balance. So the new front wing is ready to be manufactured and it takes three days to do one of those and it's 11 days to Australia. So we should have three of the new spec one by the time we get to that, along with the side pods, which I think we've not got yet either. So Australia, the first sprint race of the season as well. First two races of our season, 12 points, looking relatively competitive. Feels like we're not in the front three, but it looks like we can at least contest with Aston Martin this year. Maybe a little bit more. It might be more of a fight for fourth than it was a fight for fifth. Not that, really was, not that it was really much of a fight for fifth in the end, but you know what I mean. The best of the rest might be two places higher up. But well, thank you for joining me on this first video in season three. As we say, we're going to rattle through this a little bit before by doing two races per episode. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this new format, let me know what you thought of it. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal by now. Until next time, ta -ra.